All right, good morning, everybody. Happy Halloween. Tuesday, uh, Thursday, October 31st, bright and early. And we are joined finally by our head women's basketball coach, Coach Duffy. Coach Duffy was named the eighth head women's basketball coach of Virginia Tech this past April, hailing from OHIO from Chaminade, Julianne. She played at Notre Dame, where she earned a two time All Big East team member selection and selected by the Minnesota Lynx in the WNBA draft. Her coaching career went from St. John's, grew up a St. John's fan, George Washington, Michigan, and then head coach at Miami, Ohio, and Marquette. At Marquette, she went 110 and 46 with three trips to the tournament. Should have been four, but COVID took one of them away. Um, but coach, so excited for you. Welcome to Blacksburg. Welcome to the show. How have you been? Uh, great to be here. Thanks, Billy Ray, for having me on. I know we've been trying to do this for for a minute now, so it's good as we get closer to the season here, a few days out, that uh, we could spend some time together. You know my awesome. background. That's a lot of all the all the stops, a lot of history in that in that path you just said. Well, you opened up the opportunity. I did want to say the one fun fact, and I'd love to learn more about this, is you won the Francis Pomeroy Naismith Award, which is an annu was an annual college basketball award, award in the United States intended to honor players who excelled on the court in spite of their height. I don't think... <laughs> That's literally the description. I don't know if it gets grittier than that, um, but it was discontinued in 2014. So that was the funnest fact I could find. Yeah, there used to be like two point guard awards, the Nancy Lieberman award that still exists. And then they had this Francis Pomeroyd and it, you had to, you couldn't inflate your height pretty much. So you had to be five, nine or under. Um, mm -hmm. And so I, I've, I'm a pretty legit five, seven. So we, we couldn't, you know, just uh, lie about the height so you could get the award. But yeah, it's really cool. Just um, back then it was a big deal to get that award. And obviously it's not that important now because it doesn't exist, but uh, yeah, the little personal word, I guess. So coach, first of all, uh, just Virginia tech, what was the draw? How did this all come to be? Uh, we're not going to spend a ton of time because I know you've been here for a little while now, but uh, yeah. just curious, like how did this all come together and what drew you to tech? Yeah, a little bit, obviously, of a surprising development with Coach Brooks leaving. And, you know, when door, one door closes, another one opens. And obviously, our teams at Marquette had been consistently really good going to the tournament. And, um, you know, when uh, Witt approached, you know, my my party about maybe taking this opportunity, um, decided to listen. And I was honestly just, you know, blown away by um, – you know, what I had seen from the outside, right? Like just college game day and the sellout crowds, Castle Guard, you know, the just success of Hokie women's basketball in the community. And then when I really dug in with WIT to understand it a little bit better and the support and the resources, I was like, man, this this might be a fit for, for my husband and I. And um, I just love the blue collar mentality. I love just how passionate people are about not just women's basketball, but, you know, the football, men's basketball, um, you know, the fall sports are finishing up right now. And I was like, man, I just, being a sports junkie, I just want to be a part of that. And I really have a strong belief that I can keep this program, you know, moving in the right direction and um, get back to the the place we were, which is really hard to do, go into a final four and win a national championship. And um, I, I didn't necessarily know there I was going to make a change, but once I heard all the pieces of what Virginia Tech had to offer, um, we felt very, very confident and comfortable that this was uh, a great opportunity. You know, I think a lot of people, um, everybody was surprised. And when you stepped into the uh, into the role here, what I absolutely loved was we were kind of curious, like, how are we going to bridge the gap from, you know, the best years in program history into what's next? And I just want to ask you, like, how important was it to you or um, how great was it to see Liz and Kayla and some of the players from that former team um, come and be at your presser or what kind of input did they have or what is your relationship sort of with the former players from uh, from teams past? I think one of my goals when I came in was to start to build the the relationships with our alumni base. And, and obviously that takes time. By no means are we there, but to to have, you know, those seniors and add um, Olivia to that mix of just being around um, as they were finishing up their last couple, you know, weeks of school, um, you know, texting and exchanging numbers and, you know, see Kayla and Liz there um, in full support, even after Liz's surgery was, was really special and meant a lot. And, and I just, I'm really excited to continue to have those relationships with as much as it's players I didn't get to coach. I, I'm very aware of what they accomplished and what they did and, and the, 
you know, the, the contribution they made to this university and this women's basketball program. And to have great examples and role models for our young players here coming up is really good. So um, I know Liz is going to be around, you know, a fair amount here in the in our season and her off season, getting ready to, to be back on the court. And um, it just it, it lightens up the whole um community here when she shows up. And then obviously here in a few months, we're going to have her, her jersey retired. Uh, but to see those people give me a hug and me acknowledge them and just give me a chance just to build the relationship is is really great. What about the recruitment of the last team um, from last year? So what were the conversations like when you first showed up? Um, and how did that kind of transpire with the transfer portal and everything else? These are as new to the players as they are to the coaches. Um, so just curious how you handled that. Yeah, I mean, I felt for the players like, you know, they didn't ask for all this change. Um, but I, I do know one thing, they're going to see a lot of change in their lives moving forward. And I thought they handled it tremendously. Like, you know, coaching changes as much as it's like a week to a week and a half, you know, and in their world, it could feel like years. And so just for me to be able to help come in and bring a little bit of stability, you know, reassuring them that it's going to be OK, I thought, you know, Carly Wenzel and Karis Baker, Mackie Nelson, and, you know, there's a, a few other ones that just kept everybody together. Matilda, um, Rose Mishaw from our seniors, you know, just they want to have a really good last year and just to, you know, be patient. Um, but again, once you get hired, you don't even have your full staff together. You're, you're in your own hiring process. So just um, building relationships quickly. Um, we got on the court pretty quickly, too, of just, you know, um, having some fun on the court and doing what they love to do. And um, and I, I think it's been really neat just to see um, all of us in different lights. You know, there's an intensity about us on the court, but it's also really fun off the court when you're just talking about school and life and what's going on um, in their worlds. And, you know, being Halloween today, just simple conversations like what were you, you know, when you were younger, you know, growing up and dressing up and all that. So, you know, that's the relationships what this is all about. And while that takes time, we didn't have a lot of time back then. Um, but it's pretty cool to see fast forward, you know, the girls are coming up in the office and hanging out and, you know, we're laughing about something and then we can flip a switch pretty quickly and get back to work and, and grind it on the court. So coach, let's talk a little bit about your philosophy. Um, starting with the defense, we're probably very used to a disciplined bend, don't break style of defense. What can fans expect in terms of defensive philosophy in 2024 or 25? I just think with our roster and our young team, we're going to emphasize it more. I think that's the mm -hmm. biggest thing of, you know, making sure it's part of our identity, um, you know, and and we're going to obviously continue to grow with that each and every day. But when you watch our practices, if anybody's who's seen them, they're, they're pretty intense with, you know, getting in a stance and rotating and taking charges and diving on the floor for a loose ball. And um, that just creates just a, a, a very – fun way of playing and then just it's a contagious energy that goes through the whole team so i think it's something their you know returners are getting used to um but we'll also recruit to that we want you know to be able to get out in the passing lanes and you know get some steals and deflections but also be very smart and disciplined i think that was one of the things about my teams at marquette we were very disciplined with our positioning and knowing the scouting reports very well and so with the young team you're you're kind of trying to transition them into all those things that it takes to be a great defensive team but um, you know, I love the offensive side of the ball, though. Don't get me wrong. Like if we can score 80, 85, that's a good thing. But, you know, as we're we're transforming and putting people in new roles, we have to um, pay attention to our defense um, here right off the bat and then let our offense um, grow uh, as these kids get in new roles. So on the offense, obviously, the last few years has been ran through the post generational player. Um, so what is the goal for the Hokies on the offensive end? And where do you see things starting on the offensive end? I think we're going to start with a balance about our, our team. I think there's multiple people on our roster and, and players who will be in the game that can have big nights. I, I don't think we'll have um, a ball dominant kid where somebody's going to take, you know, 20, 25 shots every night and they have to score for us to, you know, win the game. I think we're going to have multiple people who can be in double figures. You saw that in our exhibition game. Um, and, but at the, at the same time, I think there's some, some people on our roster who can have big nights. So it's a little bit of that balance. Um, you know, I've always, um, 
you know, really enjoyed having our teams get out and transition. You know, I always say that first 10 to 12 seconds of the shot clock is the, is the kids' time to go and create and all that player development we talk about. Um, they can have fun and move the ball and share the ball. And then after that, you know, um, you know, people ask me a lot, what are you going to play? What's your style? And I just said, you know, we're going to take some things from Marquette. We did a lot of good things. We're going to take other new things um, and fit our roster and our talent and what we can do on the court. So um, there'll be some evolution with that as we recruit and we get more confident with our current roster and um, kind of go from there. But that's that's the best part about being a coach. We do a lot of things, but the X's and O's and figuring out scheme and strategy, uh, it'll be it'll be fun to get going on Monday. Two players before we move into rapid fire. I want to ask you about Karis Baker. Uh, fans know her as a shooter. We've been able to interview her a couple of times. Fantastic personality. Um, just curious how you've seen her game grow. And I know it's a little bit different because you've probably only watched it on film uh, before you got here. But how have you seen her grow um, over uh, the time that you've had to work with her? Yeah, you got to watch Carrie. She might be taking your job someday. She's uh, she's very good. Um and that communications major inside, yep. uh, but just great, great kid overall. Really have enjoyed getting to know her. She's matured so much from freshman year to sophomore year. Mm -hmm. Obviously, she's a great shooter. Um, I'm biased. Lefty shooters um, are always fun to watch. But I think the big thing that we talked about moving um, into this, this second year, you're a little bit more comfortable, even though you have a new coach and a new system, is just expanding her versatility in her game, um, you know, going off the bounce a little bit more, scoring in the paint. Um, I think she can create some mismatches with her size, you know, take some smaller players down low. Um, but just opening up her game a little bit more and then helping her through that process of that. Um, she's an energizer bunny. I don't worry about her work ethic and, you know, the times she's in the gym and you know how she's bringing people along with her that's a, that's a special thing and a great leader she already is as a as a young player and I think the biggest thing is her finding her voice you know with some of the upperclassmen uh, but I think our fans are really going to enjoy enjoy watching her and you know seeing her game evolve and you know all these players it's about consistency uh, but we're going to put her in some different spots and um, there's no you know there's no reason that I don't think you know there's no reason she can't have a big a big year for us. And the last player I'll ask you about uh, specifically is just Carly Wenzel. I'm super excited for the opportunity for her because last year, playing back up to Georgia in the Iowa game, she has some great offensive spurts, plays awesome defense. How have you seen her game grow, and how do you see her fitting? I guess people need to stop asking you, how do you anticipate this to be used because you're all figuring it out as you go, but – I guess, can you just speak to how she's improved her game over the offseason as well? Yeah, Carly's been great. I just, um, I'm so excited just to watch her continue to evolve. Like every, mm -hmm. you know, every year you want to get a little bit better. And she got some minutes out on the court. You know, she got to play behind a really, really good player in Georgia. Um, but I think the difference with Carly is, you know, she's not Georgia. She's a, a very different player. Um you know, we can play her at the point. We can play her on the wing. She's got length. She can disrupt people, like you mentioned, on the defensive end. Um, she's really trying to make a commitment to the defensive end and learning the strategy of it and how to guard different players. And, you know, she's kind of a slippery kid. Her and Lonnie White are both, you know, with their with their length. They can get around screens. They can um, disrupt people. And so that's a, a big goal of hers to improve defensively. And then I think what's nice about her offensively is she's kind of like, whatever you need me to do, um, we want her to be in a scoring role. Um, I think she's going to be able to show her versatility with that, uh, meaning she can stretch the floor with her three. She can get downhill and then we've really um, challenged her with with establishing a little bit of a mid-range game um, with the way we're going to be playing so um, a little bit more pro style offense with her and uh, I think the big thing is just getting her comfortable in that role mm -hmm. um, and knowing she's going to be on the floor night in and night out and the grind of that and um, you know we we try and help her between myself and the Tor Coleman and Chardonnay Zoll like give her those tidbits of knowledge of like why we're coaching you hard it's just to prepare you you know when the when the real season hits and you know you're going to be on the scouting report and you're going to be a marked player so just ch challenge her in different ways before she gets to that point so she can handle it better but I think she's done great she's matured a lot already and uh, I'm excited to see you know how her I guess redshirt sophomore year will be. So, Coach, uh, before we move into Letters from the Lunch Pail, I have some rapid-fire questions. You don't have to be rapid, but uh, okay. these are more kind of off-topic. Uh, the first one's the hardest one. Uh, I ask everybody, if you could have dinner with four people, dead or alive, who are you having dinner? I know, I know. It's a tough one. Where are you going and who's uh, and who's showing up? Gosh, four, four people. Um, well, 
let me uh, start with family. So um, my father, who he, it's been documented a little bit. He was an early onset dementia, Alzheimer patient. So to be able to reconnect with him, um, it would be amazing. I'm going to say Michael Jordan. Um, no hesitation in my mind, the GOAT. Um, you know, these young kids always think it's Kobe and LeBron and all these other guys, but um, Jordan for sure. Uh, this is an intriguing one. I know we got the election coming up. I would have loved, uh, I would love to go to dinner with Abraham Lincoln. So blast mm. from the past, um, just to learn a little bit more about her, how our country was established and how we got to this point. Uh, fourth one. Um, let's see. Uh, Pat Summit, I'll put as my fourth one. So just a, a mentor of mine growing up, watching her coach and take her Tennessee teams to new heights and, uh, you know, being a sports junkie, I am uh, honoring her. So that, that's her, be my four. Well done. I mean, you covered a lot of bases there. Not a lot of hesitation. Very good. Awesome. I almost named, I'm big into music too. I almost named, uh, you know, you know, a few of my favorite bands or singers just to spice up, spice it up a little bit. But well, that was the next question. Ones. That was the next question. I'm curious, what do you listen to on your drive to the facility at practice? Like what kind of music do you listen to? Yeah, I'm, I'm a, a mix of everything. So, okay. you know, the, the, the players keep me young with all the rap and new R and B that's going on. Um, I like my pop, uh, country a little bit. So some good songs like that. Um, I like old school, a little bit more old school bands like a U2. So I like mm -hmm. my rock, um, I like slow jams. I'm naming it all, but, uh, but yeah, no, I, I like a little bit of everything. It's all about mood. So yeah. I'm pretty chill before games, but you know, depending if you need, I always tease, like if you got to throw on journey, don't stop believing the pipe, you know, pump people up or yourself up. Um, I, I, I like a good range of everything. So on the pregame note, do you have any superstitions? Um, lay your socks out a certain way, have to do some sort of walk before the game. Do you have any type of like pregame superstition? No, for me, it's more about routine. Like I try and get a workout in, um, you know, I try and, you know, carve time after we're done with all of our prep, just like laying out my play card, you know, take a shower, um, you know, just, you know, hear from my family a little bit, but mm -hmm. nothing real crazy. Um, you know, coaches, we work a lot of hours. So I always try and get a little bit of like a little bit of meditation or quick nap in, like, even if it's like, you know, 10, 15 minutes, just to kind of turn off the brain before you got to be at your best, you know, for your players that night. So mm -hmm. uh, more routine than like, I think you learned as a player, I was way more superstitious of like left sock, right shoe, whatever yeah. it is. But as a coach, you realize like there's so much you can't control, you know, when you're dealing with 18 to 22 year olds. So it's more about just routine and, you know, getting, um, getting a clear mind to, to, to be at your best for your players. Two Halloween related ones before we go to the fan questions. Number one, what is the best Halloween costume you have ever donned in your life? Oh, so I love Halloween. I love dressing up, uh, whether we're passing out candy or, you know, we had a, a, a program Halloween party uh, not too long ago. So best one. I mean, I'll name some of them. I was a crayon when I was a little kid. I've been a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Um most recently, uh, a week or so ago, we have a lot of nature and, you know, um, animals by us. So I dressed up as the hokey bird, <laughs> and my husband dressed up as a deer because there's a lot of deer in our yard. Yeah. And then our dog, we put her in a little pig uh, costume. So there's been some some good ones um, over the years. And then what is the best candy? When you were trick or treating years ago, what was your what was your favorite? I'm a Reese's person myself. Um, but what was your, what was your, uh, what were you hoping for? Yeah, I have a bad sweet tooth. I, I would say more the chocolate route. So I'll do a Snickers. I'm, I'm, I'm with you on the Reese's. Mm -hmm. Um, but then like a weird one that like will pop in and you're like, I'm down with that. You know, once a year, a couple of times a year is like milk duds. Isn't that or the, wa the whoppers? Those yeah, little, like, no, not the uh, whoppers, whopper. the milk duds, but, yep. um, you know, like things like that. Um, I don't know. I'm not crazy into all the, the uh, sour stuff, but, mm -hmm. um, you throw some Swedish fish in there too. You can tell I'm not biased with the candy. <laughs> so we're going to wrap it up with some fan questions that were submitted. Uh, first one I love um, because I remember when you had your uh, press conference, I don't exactly remember what you said, um, but you alluded to having national title aspirations and nobody ever says that. Like that's not, that's not, uh, something that hokey fans are used to. And everyone's like, okay, I'm glad somebody, I'm, I'm glad somebody said it. So Sam Jesse wants to know, how do you set the expectations and framework for winning a national championship at a program and university that have never done it before? 
Yeah, it's really hard to do. Um, but I think, you know, when I made the jump from Marquette, you know, I, I wanted to be at a place where we can attain that. Um, as we, you know, build this roster and we're out recruiting, um, I, I want to be clear. I want to win. I want to cut down nets. Um, you know, the way this conference is built, you know, top to bottom, you're going to get challenged every night. And if you can be in that top echelon, you're a really, really good team. Um, so, yeah, I'm not afraid to talk about it or say it. I think the difference is once you then you can put it out there in the air and then you just put your head down and get to work, you know, whether that's on the recruiting side, developing your current players, um, improving your own craft. Uh, I think there's so many steps that go along with that. But um, these fans want it. They deserve it. I think we have, you know, a great chance in years to come to do it um, because of that fan base, because it's turning in. We, we joke and quote, it's a women's basketball school. No offense to our other sports. We love them, too. But, you know, we've 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 had a fan base jump on board. That's pretty special. And so we want to give them the opportunity to to be in those situations. For uh, Ed Williams, who covers basketball for us here at Sons of Saturday, uh, as someone who appreciates point guard play, we have had some top tier point guards play recently. As a point guard yourself, what do you look for in recruits and what has impressed you most about Mackenzie Nelson and Samaya Suffren? Yeah, we have a um, you know a little bit of a point guard cut by committee this year with Carly. Um, you know, Samaya will play off the ball. Mackie will play at you know some point, but I think the big thing, like you know, qualities I've always believed in is you got to be the hardest worker. Um, you got to really prove every day that you know your your voice will matter because of the work you put in, um, in film sessions, on the court, extra getting shots. Um, you know, the other thing I think is great with point guard play. You got to be a positive um, energy for your team. Um, in our role, we have to sometimes point out the things that are hard and hold people accountable, but you also have to have those relationships and positivity with your teammates because um, that will go a long way. And uh, yeah, it's the hardest job being a point guard. Um, I don't care what people say. Um, it's harder than my job some days. So, you know, just, just making sure our players are comfortable and supported. Um, we're hard on our point guards in a good way, meaning like, you know, we want them to reach their max potential as we do with all of our players. So, yeah, there's a growth process and, and young point guard play um, is a challenge, but it's really cool when you can get those game minutes. I'm really excited, you know, for Mackey, um, you know, sitting out in a year with that red shirt is challenging and I think she's handled it really well. Um, but just to get comfortable out on the court and make other people better um, are some of the qualities we look for. So I always love this question, especially with uh, a coach who just arrived at school is uh, Nick Lavin says outside of basketball, what has been your favorite thing since moving to Blacksburg? I'll add on top of that. Have you had an opportunity to kind of get out and check out Blacksburg, like at least a little bit uh, when you first got here? So um, that's a question. Yeah, I, I mean, I think when we we made the decision to come here, it was, you know, to be totally immersed in the community um, as much as we could around the job. Um, sometimes people see my husband more than me because I'm out, you know, and about recruiting or on the road or all of that. But, you know, we want to build relationships with, you know, our fan base and people in the athletic department and at our university. So we've tried hard to, you know, show faces as, at as much as we can. Um, we're always like, you know, out going to restaurants if we can with the time and, um, it's just a little bit in your first year, you're, you're, you're pretty busy, but we've, we've enjoyed just how beautiful the area is. I mean, just, uh, I mean, this is some of the best fall weather I've ever been a part of. So just the beauty of campus, being able to go out and take a walk, um, you know, just those little small moments to slow down a little bit as you're ripping and running as a coach is, is important. So, um, you know, we, we, try and just find those moments within the community, um, which has been great. And I tell people like when we're out, you know, whether it's a target or a local restaurant or whatever it is, like, don't, don't feel like you, you, you can't say hi and, you know, take a picture or get to know us uh, uh, as long as, um, you know, as we're here. So that's, that's important to our start here. And obviously time helps with getting to know uh, more people, but we enjoy Blacksburg, Christiansburg, the whole, um, the whole area is really special. So coach, last question I have for you. Um, and you said it earlier about, uh, you said joke about a women's basketball school. Like the fact is over the last decade, the, we've never seen success like this in this century. And it's been incredible. And my question for you is what is your message to Virginia tech to Hokie nation going into this next season? Um, castle Coliseum, the castle guard has been unbelievable. Um, ESPN, ACC network, everybody talking about not just the team, but the environment around the team that made huge differences. So if you had a message to fans, to Castle Guard, to everybody else about what you're trying to build here and what you hope to 
uh, how they can support, um, what would your message be? Well, first off, just thank you. Up to this point, uh, everybody you mentioned has been incredible to the success of this program. And it, it takes a village, right, to fill uh, a coliseum and fill um, an arena. And the fact that we've done it already, we sold out season tickets back in August. Um, there's such a buzz around around this area. Um, you know, my message is, is just to stay true to who you are. Um, be loud, be proud. When we put on this uniform and put Hokies across our chest or Virginia Tech across our chest, we're, we're one with each other. And I think that's so important um, that our, our fan base and our community feels like they're a part of this. And I've just, and I've asked everybody to be patient. You know, we're building, we're grinding. We have a lot of new faces and, and, and youth, um, you know, that are gonna be in different roles and to, to have fun with watching them grow. We aren't a finished product when we open up on Monday. Um, and, and the goal is to get better um, by the time March hits. So um, just uh, the thank you to everyone. And then let's bring that energy, let's bring that noise, um, that consistency. And uh, if we're, we're all sticking together, I think it's gonna be a, a great situation. Hokies tip off the season versus UNC Wilmington on November 4th at 5 p.m. Coach, I really, really appreciate you taking the time. Super excited for you, and um, we'll be watching along the way. So hope to get you back on soon, and best of luck this year. Awesome. Thanks, Billy Ray.